I guess wanted to si they sided with the humans. So we have Gon, Killua, Morel, Netoro, Meliaron, Knuckle, Shoot, and Ikalgo invade the palace. Basically, they get into the palace and get different. They um. They go different ways, but their plans are almost failed immediately. Another problem with this ar arc is that a lot of assuming goes on. I say this a lot in hunt with Hunter Hunter. The characters are smart. But at this point, they almost seem too intelligent to assume certain things on very minor details. Like, they just go on that. And at some points, that doesn't seem very smart to just assume something and then go, just go on it. At some point, you're going to have to, like, investigate this more. But, you know, of course, it's Hunter x Hunter, so they're, they're normally right. And there is another point that I brought up that I wanted to cover. Uh, let me see. Oh, yeah. At, at this point, um, when they break into the palace, this this was too detailed. Like, everyone's like, oh, best episode of 2014. This was way too detailed. And I know for a fact that Josh, uh, Zombie, Zombie Zebra Dude or Zombie Zebra Manga, whatever YouTube channel he's doing, he kind of agrees with me that the arc is too detailed. I don't, I don't know if he feels the same way about the arc as me, but I, he agrees that it's way too detailed, like telling exactly what the characters are doing. And he actually made fun of that. And it, it, this point when they break in, it tells exactly what they're doing. Oh, they look this way. Oh, Yuppie did this. He reacted this. He felt that. It's dumb, okay? It's too much detail. We can clearly see what's going on, Togashi. So we have Mata Yuppie or Yuppie guarding the stairs. They fight him while the others, while other people, you know, in the group get past him. I believe Gon and Killua get past him, and then eventually everyone else leaves or goes somewhere else, and it's basically a fight between Shoot and, um, Shoot Knuckle, Meliaron, and Yuppie. And at, at some point it's just like Shoot and Yuppie. The problem with Hunter Hunter is like, I, I can't enjoy the fights. I, I really can't enjoy the fights at this point. And you know, we have fights against the ants that break out all over the place. There's a side mission to rescue Palm and etc. The characters that Togashi created are pretty cool and have unique personalities, but there's just way too many of them. I don't understand like how the ant process works. As I said before, I had to Google this, okay? Because this is what happened. Two humans were eaten, and then cult was made. But actually, two ants were made, and they didn't say that. See, like, um... I, I thought the other ants, I thought all the ants were like combination of human. they were like a combination of humans, but actually that's not true. Each ant is one specific human, which makes a lot more sense, but he did not tell us that, so we didn't know. And this is what I said before I found this out. I was saying that these other ants are definitely combinations of humans, of many humans and ants, so why do they have one characteristic of an animal and one human? And some of the ants remember their past lives as humans, but... In the last episode of this arc, we learn about this indirectly, and there we go. That's fixed. Some of the, I already said that. And this arc is very long, so I'm trying my best. But at some point, Netoro and Zeno come in there, and they do damage all over the palace with Zeno's dragon drive. Then Zeno leaves and doesn't fight with them because he's just like in it for the money. He's like, I've done my job, and then he hops away. That's odd. I don't, I don't know. I guess this is this isn't your um your classic shonen because he just leaves and he never comes back. Like you would expect him, even if he leaves, you would expect him to come back. This is not your classic shonen, man. So then Netero leaves with the king to another location, which takes episodes for them to get there. Netero also gets into a fight with Pito at some point, and I believe that's when they first get there, and. Pitu, Pitu, I like Pitu because Pitu is smart. Pitu used Doctor Blyce to um, save himself from fall, from like being shot like all the way from the distance and like to the point where Pitu would miss the entire fight. So let me see where I'm at. Uh, and then Gon is bent on fighting Pitu after what happened to Kite because he learns that Kite is dead. Uh, the one thing that happened it was like when Netro got there. Gon is just looking at Netero, and then Netero, he throws his thumb back, because he already knows, that was kind of cool, and then Gon goes into the, there, and he, we get the whole situation with P2, but P2 has the heal Komugi, who got injured because of the dragon drive, Komugi is blind, as I, I didn't say that earlier, Komugi, Komugi is blind, so, um, 
the dragon drive destroys the palace piece of the palace you know falls down of course she's blind she can't she can't sense it or anything she might hurt it but she can't really exactly avoid it I, I don't want to get too into too into that but I mean your senses are heightened when you lose one sense or one sense is shut off but I guess she couldn't avoid that so she gets injured um, P2 is healing Komugi uh, where am I at and then Gon, he almost goes off for an entire episode on this. Like, his whole argument was that you're a chimera ant. You killed Kite without blink blinking an eye. So why are you healing her? And it's an okay argument, but let me talk about it for a second. Just because an ant kills a human doesn't mean they hate the human entire ra like the entire human race. Anyway, they all have human DNA in them. Plus, P2 was protecting Komugi for the king. It's not like P2 um, actually wanted to protect Komugi. P2 did it because P2 loves the king and fears the king and all that. So, Gon just sits there and waits for uh, P2 to heal Komugi. And P2 actually tells Gon like a longer time so that um, she has plenty... He has plenty of time to heal Komugi. And I really like that because P2 is a smart character. I like P2. P2 is definitely one of my favorite Chimera ants. Uh, and this fight was hyped up a lot. This fight between Gon and P2. He's like, uh, if you uh, make any sudden move. I, I forgot what he said exactly, but if you, you took another step. I think this is like when Poof came in there. If you took another step, I'll kill the girl. And it's like. Oh wow, you you're willing to kill your own um your own kind. You're willing to kill humanity. Uh da, da, da. and even after knowing like all the stuff about uh Gon and Kite, someone actually explained it for me in the comments. I still didn't like it. I understand it, but I don't like it. Revenge is a path taken by the weak. And at some point Palm wakes up, you know, she has powers now. Like she's an ant and then Killua has to fight her and then she suddenly becomes good again. People, some people didn't like this because it, it all happened in the same episode. There was no like progression, or, there was no build up to this. Okay, you know she's evil. It's Killua. Um, something, something gone. Okay, she's better. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think uh, after this, is uh, Netero versus the King, and it took a while to get to Netero versus the King. And the king doesn't even want to fight, and I like this. I really like this. He just wants to talk, but Netero can't do that. Because if Netero talks to the king, the king can convince him. Because the king's smart. The king is smart, intelligent, everything. The king can convince him to his side, and Netero can't allow that. Because this is a job, and Netero has to get this job done. So he convinces the king to... Like, Netero's attacking the king this entire time. But the king is just still, like, blocking and just sitting down. He's like, I just, I only want to talk. And he's so calm about it, too. I was expecting the king to just lose his mind and attack Netero. But he didn't. And I, I like the king's character. King, the king and, um, P2 are definitely some of the best ants in the arc. Or, and they're very developed. But really, uh, I like Yu-P2. I don't really like Shia LaPouf. Shia LaPouf, man. So, uh, he convinces the king to fight. In exchange for his name, because I said earlier, I, I believe Morel or Nove, someone was present to learn the learn the king's name, and then they told um, Netro about it. And throughout this entire arc, the king never showed any uh, unique nin abilities, and that's what I really didn't like, because everyone else has unique nin abilities. He just takes other abilities and uses them. It, it's stupid. So he's really strong, but that's about it. And then the fight starts to get crazy. And then they fall into this underground place, and he's like, Netro's like, this is going to be your tomb. And then they fight him in there. They're like pillars. Um, Netro's knocking the king all over the place. Cool, I guess. And uh, Netro, the king starts to fight back. He's, he starts to fight back for real. And then Netro starts to get his limbs cut off. So he uses this, um, this zero hand technique, which causes him to, like, age a lot and Netro is already like a hundred over a hundred years of age and we also learn more about Netro's character in this arc which I forgot about uh his backstory and everything about his technique which is pretty cool but I think it went on for like two episodes which I which I didn't like um yeah Netro starts to get his he starts to get his limbs cut off and you know he figures out he can't win this fight and he was prepared so what he does is he stabs himself in the chest committing suicide 
and there's a bomb in his chest. We get this little flashback, um, which is pretty awesome. It, the, it's pretty awesome. The bomb is interesting, and this bomb is called the Poor Man's Rose. And this bomb has extreme power, but it also spreads poison after it goes off, which can keep infecting people. Like, people that haven't even, like, um, you know, inhaled the bomb, they'll, the bomb material, they'll get it from another person. And, um, I thought this was an awesome idea, except for the fact, you know, bombs should never be used in wars for many reasons, because it, it's a, it's a moral thing. It's a moral thing. Like, you shouldn't use a bomb in war. And apparently the bomb is similar to um, the atomic bomb, which gives off radiation, right? I think the atomic bomb gives off radiation after it's, after it's used, and then that can spread to other people. Like, if something is around radiation and you, and you bring it near, you, near yourself, you're going to become sick. I think there was, like, a story about a kid who found a rock and he got sick from it. I, was that, like, freshman year in high school? I don't know. I think, I think my teacher was talking about that. I, I specifically rem remembering it being freshman year, but yeah, I, I think he was talking about a story like that. And uh, the king is nearly killed by this bomb. Like right before uh, when Netsuo stabs his his chest, the king starts running. I don't know where he's running to, but he starts to get out of there. <laughs> and um, yeah, the king is nearly killed by the bomb, but Yupi and Poof bring him back to life, giving him most of the power, which leads to a weird scene very yaoi-ish, and then Yupi and Poof become queens, but that doesn't really go anywhere because, you know, the end of the arc, they, they don't, yeah. <laughs> the king loses part of his memory, and he becomes different, and I didn't like this part. It's like, it's like oh, the bomb went off, I lost my memory. It, 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 we, it was weird, it came out of nowhere. I understand it's, it's like good to the plot and everything, but I didn't, I didn't like it. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm just like, yeah, I'm reading through this. He gains, he gains Yupi and Poof's powers, but he still doesn't have any unique Nin abilities. Um, I don't like that. And then Poof tries to make him not remember Komugi, because the king doesn't remember Komugi. The king doesn't remember a lot of stuff. And it, this little mini part is just about the king trying to, uh, remember everything. So Gon finally gets to fight P2, but he can't beat P2 without, um, I, I'm just gonna say, it, he can't beat P2 on his own. So he, um, he uses this Nin, and this is like a new ability, this, this Nin, he's had like this built up Nin, you know, cause Gon was pissed off earlier in this arc, and he, um, his Nin ability, his new Nin ability or whatever, it makes him go up to the level, uh, this, this person is stronger than him, so he, he becomes stronger than them, but the Nin ability also puts a, a massive strain on his body, like he could lose his Nin ability, uh, and I didn't like this either, he kills P2 brutally, um, they're fighting in the forest, he, uh, I, I think I remember specifically how it goes, but they're walking down there, uh, P2 tries to attack Gon or something, Gon punches P2, not he kicks P2 up in the air, punches P2, knocks P2 like through f like trees and rocks, and then P2 lands lands on a tree. He goes over there, and uh, Killua gets over there, and Gon's just punching P2. P2's already dead, and he's just punching, and punching, and punching. He's crying and everything, and then P2 uses this technique which um. I, I said this over and over again. P2 is smart. P2 used this technique to... I'm sorry, the phone's ringing, so I have to stop for a second. Wow, guys, we're almost at 30 minutes. Yeah, I answered the phone two different times, and then I got I got I also got some water. Uh, I, w I was talking about P2. So, yeah, uh, before the fight begins, like, they go to this place, and then Gon's trying to get P2 to heal, uh, heal Kite, because Kite's there or something, and then she... P2 basically says that he's like only a shell, he's he's already dead, blah 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 blah. Gon's Nin builds up and everything, and then he transforms he transforms into like an adult form of himself with extremely long hair. Uh yeah, but when Gon's Nin is building up, P2 does this thing, and we don't we don't get a name for the technique or anything, P2 does this thing and we see this puppet behind him, like this uh this Nin puppet. And then I was talking about later that Gon had killed 
P2, but P2 wasn't dead because P2's body, P2 did this thing where his body would still have a mission even after death, and this mission was to kill Gon, but that didn't work out because um, basically P2 goes after Killua, Gon um, tries to, Gon gets his arm cut off, and he, he how he beats the, um, the, the, headless P2 or whatever, he throws his arm in the chest of it, and I, then, then he, th I think he, um, he uses, like, the nub of his arm, and does his, uh, was it, rock, paper, 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 rock, paper, rock, yeah, rock, paper, rock, and then he, um, it's like this huge explosion, which was cool, but still, I didn't really enjoy that. I actually did a live reaction to that. It's it's on my iPod. It's not on my iPod, but it's like in a in a message, so I can like save it whenever I want. But I don't have a way to upload it because the file's too big. I don't know how to convert 